Well, hey, it's it's Palm Sunday. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm your host, Evangelist Anita Rivera. Uh, it is April 2nd, 2023. And um, just before I even get started, I had dental surgery uh, about two and a half days ago. So I'm still recovering and um, had three teeth pulled because of an infection. Anyway, I'm it's preparing itself for implants. So I guess it's going to take like um, like three months or so. So I'm going to have uh, some, uh, it's clearly you could probably see a tooth missing um, and then there's two more that you probably can't see. But if I talk a little funny, uh, if I, you know, I don't have anything covering it so the site can heal, uh, just don't mind me because I know you're here for the word anyway. <laughs> I love to smile and everything so it kind of gets me, catches me off guard, but I think I'll be all right. But it's Palm Sunday. Come on. How exciting is that? Praise the Lord. Welcome one. Welcome all. God bless it. God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I am your host, Evangelist Anita Rivera. Uh, this is the beginning of Holy Week. Why is it so special? Why is it so significant? Palm Sunday, we're going to get into specific scriptures as to what it means, but in a nutshell, Palm Sunday celebrates Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem and it marks the start of Holy Week, which is the final days of his earthly ministry. So I want to take the time in this broadcast to go over five things uh, and it all pertains to how, 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 how honorable and special and uh, spiritually significant this week is in light of the fact that we're living in the last days, in light of, of, of end time biblical prophecy. Number one, we're going to go over the entry of uh, Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. And then I want to share with you a specific prophecy uh, that stated that this would happen thousands of years prior to that, uh, that, that event actually taking place. And then we're going to go into what the end time book of Revelation talks about and how Palm Sunday is signified in a portion of scripture in the book of Revelation, which I find very, very fascinating. And then we're going to talk about how Palm Sunday also represents our righteousness, specifically with the symbology of palms. And then last but certainly not least, we're going to, I want to share with you how Holy Week, this week that many Christians do celebrate, but I think many Christians, you know, don't celebrate it. And maybe they say, well, it's more of a Catholic thing or it's more of another religious type thing. It's not really Christianity. No, it is Christianity. It's in the scriptures. As a matter of fact, the Old Testament, actually, there's a portion of scripture in the Old Testament that prophesies Holy Weeks. So I want to get all, I'm going to get all into that right now. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me take you to the Gospel of Luke. Now, in the scriptures, there are four specific places that talks about Jesus's triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem uh, this day over 2,000 years ago. That's the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 1 through 11. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 1 through 11. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 28 through 44. And the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 13. Uh, but again, I want to take your attention to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 28 through 44. Uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 28. Let's read together. Come on, it's Palm Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for your holiness. Jesus, we give you praise. All right. When Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Beth Bethphage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who went, so those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their own clothes on the colt and they sat and they set Jesus on it. Now the colt is another word for donkey. 
Verse 36, and as Jesus went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as Jesus was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, a whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that had been, that, that had been seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the, stores, uh, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it. If you, he wept over it saying the following, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. Wow. So here we see a prophecy of Jesus, not a prophecy, an actual event, an account that was recorded for us over 2,000 years ago by the beloved physician Luke in the Gospel of Luke. Again, I gave you four specific portions of scripture in all four Gospels where this same event was recorded for us from his disciples. And so Holy Week is very significant because, again, it represents Jesus's entry into Jerusalem it represents that it is the start of Holy Week and why this week is so holy is because it literally is the final days of Jesus's earthly ministry for example today is Palm Sunday April 2nd 2023 tomorrow is considered Holy Monday April 3rd 2023 and Holy Monday signifies Jesus declaring that he is the resurrection and the life by raising Lazarus from the dead. This happened this week over 2,000 years ago. This is also the time where Mary, the sister of Martha, anointed the feet of Jesus with costly spikenard oil for his burial. And that is recorded for us in the Gospel of John chapter 11. Now, everything I'm sharing with you right now, this, this specific portion of the broadcast is actually located right on the front homepage of my church ministry website online. I invite you to visit it right now, www.emoaf.org, E-M, excuse me, E-M-O-A-F.org. I have, they sewed my gums shut while they did the, pulling the three teeth and doing the implants. So pardon me if I didn't sound funny. I'm trying not to trip up on my own tongue here. But um, please visit me on my church ministry website because right on the front homepage, it actually shares in, in, in detail uh, what day of the week represents for this week for Holy Week. I am just honored that I get to be a part of it as a, as a believer in Jesus Christ, as one who's been born again by the Holy Spirit of God. I've been walking with the Lord for 18 years, and it was 18 years ago this time uh, that I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ uh, in an empty church. And then shortly thereafter, about a month or so after, I publicly declared him in another church. I was not a church goer. I was brand new. I was unsaved until I gave my life to Jesus. And then I became born again by the power of his Holy Spirit. And so this week is very, uh, it's very significant for me personally as, um, as, a, as a believer. But also, I mean, and, and that is because of the fact that I, I was saved. But also the fact that Jesus himself, uh, uh, it was uh, the last week of his earthly ministry, to become the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world, to be the very propitiation of the sin of all mankind. So the week that changed the world truly is perfectly fitted as a title for this particular week. Anyway, uh, again, on um, uh, again, I, want, I was inviting you to my church ministry website to see this in detail. While you're on the church ministry website this week, we're also inviting you to partake of a special Holy Week 2023 offering. It is an honorable way, uh, a very sacred, sanctified, godly way to remember 
the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So there is a donate button right there on the front homepage of our church ministry website. If you've never donated during the time of Holy Week, what a wonderful time to do it now. Log on to my church ministry website. It'll be right there on the front homepage. On April 4th, 2023, we co we're covering Palm Sunday right now, and then we just shared with you Holy Monday. On Holy Tuesday, that is uh, significant because that's the time when Jesus sits on the Mount of Olives and predicts the destruction of the temple. He also shared in detail to his disciples the signs of the times and the end of the age and the day of the Lord as he sat on the Mount of Olives. That's recorded for us in the Gospel of Luke chapter 21. On April 5th, 2023, Holy Wednesday, that signifies the, the prediction that Jesus himself shared of his death on the cross. That's recorded for us in the Gospel of John chapter 12, verse 27 through 36. Judas Iscariot also conferred with the chief of priests on this day, on, on Holy Wednesday, uh, to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. That's recorded for us in the Gospel of Luke chapter 22, verse 1 through 6. On April 6, 2023 is known as Holy or Maundy Thursday, and that is the Passover. Now, keep in mind the Passover technically starts on Wednesday and it ends on Thursday. So um, that includes the Passover. It also represents the Last Supper, the prayer and betrayal in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's recorded for us in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 14 through 56, and the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 7 through 53. Also on April 7th, 2023, we, we honor what's called Holy or Good Friday, and that represents the Son of God standing trial. He was severely scourged. He was then crucified and died. It is finished, he said, before he gave up his spirit to the Father, and then he was buried in a tomb. That's recorded for us in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verse 53 through 72, and chapter 15, verse 1 through 47. And then on Saturday, we honor the time as Holy or Black Saturday, April 8th, 2023, as the Son of God being under the earth, the heart, the belly of the earth, as prophesied in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 40, where Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, uh, excuse me, for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be. And then, on April 9th, 2023, while many people will be celebrating Easter, um, we will be honoring the resurrection on Resurrection Sunday. Nothing wrong with Easter eggs. I got children, and we all love that, but we, we, we honor this special day, Resurrection Sunday, where two angels appeared before the women, saying, Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, is not here. He is risen. See the place where they laid him. Praise be to God. So that's why we celebrate and honor Holy Week. Amen? Amen. All right, so I shared with you the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Now, I want to share with you a specific prophecy that declared that this would happen thousands of years prior and is shared for us in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah is the second to the last book in the Old Testament before we introduce to the New Testament. And Zechariah was a prophet of God who was used mightily by the Lord to speak his word with regards to many things, one of which was the end times. He also saw very interesting symbols, um, I'd say it's very interesting visions of things uh, that represented heaven and the last days. And so, and also that regarding Jesus, the Messiah. One of the things that was shared in Zechariah chapter nine, verse nine, says the following, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And, and, and that, is, that was a prophecy of Jesus that is shared again four separate times in the Gospels. One that I just shared with you a moment ago, the Gospel of Luke chapter, 20, chapter 19, verse 28 through 44. So here Jesus was prophesied through the mouth of Zechariah by God himself as a coming king. 
Another thing I want to share with you is what the book of Revelation says about palms, if you will. I think it's very significant. It correlates to this day, Palm Sunday. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, the Bible talks about a multitude from the great tribulation. And it says the following, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So here palm branches is shown during the time of the multitude that, have, that was delivered or that was uh, brought forth from the great tribulation. What does palm branches mean as we are honoring this Palm Sunday? Um, according to um, Wikipedia and other, uh, um, uh, other tools, BibleStudyTools.com and so forth, they say that classical, um, excuse me, let me, let me show, I had it right here, here it is. In ancient times, palm branches symbolized goodness, well-being, grandeur, steadfastness, and victory. Can we all say victory? Come on. Victory is, uh, it, it, it comes from Jesus. He is the victor. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And the palm tree is an important symbol for victory for Israel after God delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Um, and we're going to be celebrating again Passover this week as well. So that's why palm branches was waved when Jesus entered Jerusalem. Uh, because of the fact that he, it, it was a proclamation that he was going to be victorious. Um, there are several other portions of scripture, but he is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, the victorious king. He's not just a king among many kings. He is the king of all kings. And he is the one who rules and reigns over all nations, over all kingdoms. And so the palm branch signifies, again, victory, his steadfastness, his goodness. And where, when we're in him, he is the vine. We're the, uh, you know, when we're in him as, as, as him being the vine, um, as, as what it says in the Gospel of John, the vine and the branches, we are, are we're, 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 we, we, excuse me, we're kept in right standing in our spirit. We have good well-being, and now we reign. Now we're victorious over all things. Amen? Another portion of scripture that talks about, that I'd like to share with you on this Palm Sunday, is how Palm Sunday represents our righteousness. And that's found in the book of Psalm, chapter 92, verse 12. The book of Psalm Chapter 92, verse 12, it says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. 
He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. So that is the word of the Lord concerning this Palm Sunday for us, that as we're in him, as our desire is towards him, as, our, as, as, we, as, we, as we have made a covenant with our eyes unto him, that we shall flourish like a palm tree, that our righteousness is in him and we will flourish. There's no going backward. There's no um, withering away. We truly become a blessed habitation, no matter what conditions are happening in the world. And last but certainly not least, I'd like to share with you how Holy Week is prophesied in the Old Testament. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23, chapter 23, verse 40. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 40 talks about the feast of the Lord. And this portion of scripture in verse 40 says the following. It says, and you shall take for yourselves on the first day, the fruit of beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. So here we are celebrating this holy week for seven days and we start off the first day of this week if you will with palm trees and and this is this is this is shared with us this is reference for us here in the book of leviticus chapter 23 verse 40 and this is the, uh, this is to honor and, and and remember the resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ the death burial and resurrection of our lord and savior jesus christ so this week isn't just remembering a man that died for us and we're just honoring him like we do all, all men. No, no, no. We're talking about the lamb that was slain over 2,000 years ago at the cross at Calvary. I know many things are happening in the times that we're living in and they're seeking to rebuild the third temple over in the nation of Israel, the city of Jerusalem. They're seeking to do open sacrifices again, the shedding of, of, of the blood of bulls and goats and having perfectly uh, prepared red heifers to make it official in their ceremony. Uh, and, and they're waiting for the Messiah, but he came already over 2000 years ago. That was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I know that we're living in the last days and I know not, not, not many will believe. And I know that there is a, a great falling away that is happening even now. But the time is upon us. And, and even though it's late, we still honor what Jesus did. We still honor the week that changed the world. We still honor this holy week. And it is honorable to remember the death, burial, and resurrection. I expect to do another broadcast with you all this week, uh, even a, um, a holy communion where I have grape juice and a wafer. And so you want to get your hearts prepared for that. Get your elements, if you will. I love doing that with you all. Um, and I just, uh, again, even, even though the hour is late and we are living in the last days, it is important that we keep our mind focused on, on the things of Jesus, on the things of God, that we are surrendered unto the Lord, that we're in right standing with God because he is coming again and every eye will see him. The Bible says, even them that pierced him. And, um, it's not God's will that any men perish but that all come to repentance. I pray for your salvation. I pray for your repentance. And I pray for your love that you would be received because you surrender your life to Jesus. And that the love that you have will continue to grow and go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And not anywhere else because and i say that because we're living in the last days and the bible says that the love of many will grow cold you know and that word love in the greek is agape love is a love of god but god is good and his mercy endures forever and he loves us and he tells us to be still in the midst of all that's happening and know that he is god is ref that, that that shared with us in psalm chapter 46 verse 10. and so i pray that you honor the Lord this week, that it be a good week for you, that you be happy in all things this week. Happy are those whose God is the Lord. Amen.
Thank you so much, friends, for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God. World reports matching biblical prophecy. Learn more about me and my church ministry at www.emof.org, E-M-O-A-F.org. Again, a reminder, while you are there, take a moment to honor the week that changed the world by placing a special Holy Week 2023 offering as an honorable way to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a donate link right there on the front homepage. If you'd like to mail it in, our mailing address is right there on our front homepage as well. All right, friends, if you or someone you know are in need of a letter of religious exemption, feel free to email me directly at anita at emof.org, A-N-I-T-A at E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. Until the next broadcast, again, I expect to bring another one to you this week. I'll be honest with you, if I could bring one to you every day this week, I would. But my mouth kind of has to recover right now. <laughs> again, I got three teeth pulled and they started some implants and it's going to take about three months or so to, for it to be completely healed to where I can get actual implanted teeth. So anyway, it's a process. So, But right now I'm feeling the threads where they sewed. <laughs> no complaints, Lord. I'm grateful. <laughs> I can't really laugh because I know it's, there's nothing on this side. But anyway, God bless you all. <laughs> Thank you for your love towards the Lord and towards the work that he does here at Moaf Church Ministry and Open Your Eyes People broadcast. Until the next time, may you be richly blessed. In Jesus' name, bye-bye.